Welcome back, everyone, to the Bitcoin Business Bureau. I'm your host, as always, Litecoin Leader. Today, we're going to be talking about rents and the epidemic that's happening throughout the United States as a result of that, through inflation, what the real costs are, not what the CPI is telling you, and how that all translates into crypto and what you can look for uh, as indicators of this becoming even a bigger and bigger problem. So let me share my screen and share a story from Bloomberg. There we go. And I'm going to walk through you. I'm not going to walk through the whole article, but I'm going to I'm going to highlight some some talking points here. So rental crisis is sparing nowhere and no one. So this came out on August 10th. Rental costs in the U.S. are soaring at the fastest price in more than three decades. Um, fastest pace, not price. Surpassing, surpassing a median of $2,000 a month for the first time ever. Pushing rents above pre, pre-CV19 levels in most major cities. Whatever, however you want to say it. So... Um, here's a highlight. Uh, this this chart kind of tells you how diversified it is across the country. You can see a lot of spots that are well above 15, uh, 15%. Miami and Orlando and Florida, lots of people heading there. Vegas, Phoenix, San Diego. These are warm places that people are migrating to. Atlanta's high. Austin, Texas, Tucson, Boston, Chicago. People are chasing work there. But basically, it's all up double digits all over the place. Uh, inflation pressure. Shelter costs account for about a third of the closely watched CPI index uh, or CPI. Uh, it's actually more, it's a little bit lower than that, but they monkey with the numbers. Uh, what, which, uh, which increased in 8.5% in July year over year, according to the Labor Department, released Wednesday. All right, let me jump over to, I finally found it. Here's the CPI index. And just to show you, this is the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, this is where the CPI is kept. It's uh, CPI unchanged month over month up eight over the month, 8%, 8.5% over the year in July. So that's the numbers. But if you dig into the numbers and the chart data, you dig into here, and here's the 12-month percent change. And they go over things like food and energy uh, and then commodities, and then they go into shelter. Shelter and rent. They're saying it's between 5.7 and 6.3%. Now, that's the number that they're saying, which is not accurate based on, you know, they're, they're saying that's, and if they're saying it's a third and they're saying it's between five and six, five and six and a half percent, five and a half and six and a half. Look in these numbers, that's wrong. All right. So it, it said 14% in May. So I don't know how they are saying five to six. So if they're off by that much, if they're off by 8% and that's a third, then CPI is lower, but it's too low by at least a few points, probably at least 3%. So we're in double-digit CPI just if they fix the real estate number. Uh, more highlights here. Some 50% of renters earn less than $50,000 a year, and the annual median now, uh, household, household income among renters is about 42.5, below the national median of 67.5. So it's significantly lower income people that this really impacting, so that they're feeling it pretty hard. Recent analysis by Bloomberg Economics found that 19 OECD countries, I'll get to that in a moment, have combined price to rent and home price to income ratios that are higher now than they were ahead of the 2008 global financial crisis. So what is OECD? I had to look that up myself and I blew up this image. So this image is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. So the key number here, the key item is here is it's these blue countries. And you can see it's Canada, U.S., and Mexico, a few like Chile, uh, that's, that's Colombia, I believe, somebody in the south, uh, it's probably, it's not Panama, it's probably uh, El Salvador, a lot of European countries, that looks like Turkey, I believe, and Australia, New Zealand, Japan, so basically, you're NATO countries, so that's, uh, it's, it's almost the identical map of NATO, so uh, going back to the article, it's basically saying that it's it's felt all around the NATO countries and basically your your WEF countries. Single family rents rose by a record 14 percent nationally in May, according to CoreLogic, a real estate data firm. Some 5.4 million households or 40 percent of households that are not current on their rent or mortgage payments said that they were likely to be evicted or foreclosed on in the next two months. That's according to the Census Bureau. Uh, from late June to early July. So let's call it July 1st, two months, August 1st, September 1st. So we're about two weeks away from this happening. So September, October is going to be a nightmare for these people. 
This is the highest share since the census started track asking this question in August 2020. Uh, not a lot of data there, but it's high. It's it's a, it's a lot of people. 40% of households, 5.4 million households. The average household has caught four people. That's over 20 million. It's almost 10% of the United States. That's 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 significant. Renters, you can see the renting numbers is between 96 and 97% now of occupancy. That means there's not a lot of properties available. It does say that they're going to be potentially getting more, and I could see that happening. We'll talk about the market. Um, but with mortgage rates going up, people are looking towards renting more. Um, tough choices. Request for Section 8 Housing Benefits, which is a federal program that offers rental assistance to low-income households. Could, you can't, this guy couldn't even register for the wait list. That's how busy that they are. Um, someone, let's see, one of the people I interviewed, skipping her large, her cone. Oh, boy. Slow down reading, Jeff. Skipping her car loan payments and coping with interruptions to her water service to, because she has to pay her rent first. So it's what they call rent eats first. So even before buying groceries. So you have rent o- over groceries, over car and phone payments. I will talk about that in a moment, about what we're looking for. So again, it's, uh, same survey for the census. People are turning towards debt. Uh, 30% of Americans said they use credit cards or loans to meet spending needs in the prior week or up from 23% in early January. So six months later, it's, it's super high. 30% of people are living on credit cards. Credit card balances jumped to $46 billion in the second quarter of this year, up 13% from a year earlier, largest increase in more than 20 years, according to a report from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. So that's the article. Uh, let me jump out of here and then start talking about a few things. So first off, <clears throat> $46 billion, the credit is very high. Uh, people, are, people are really stretched beyond their means. They are just borrowing money and time and do whatever they can to make ends meet. And some even can't. You saw that over 5 million people are going to be evicted probably in September or October. Uh, and that's households, not people. So you're looking at 20 million homeless people added to the mix. And for people in warm weather states like California and Texas, you see how rampant the homeless problem is in those states. Um, i just try to make sure that I hit on everything. So what this is is really we, we've talked about some of the things about um, – People keep not being able to make their, their phone payments or late. But I think earnings are coming out this week. Maybe they came out last week for Netflix and Hulu and other like uh, online services and things that are like almost luxury items. Some people th- think they're like core items, but people have to cut corners somewhere. So they're going to be cutting corners on paying. And if we see people lower their subscriptions for online services of any way, shape, or form, even at Amazon Prime or just Hulu or Netflix, whatever they're paying on a month over a month, watch these numbers go down as people don't have the money to pay for these services. So uh, it's going to get rough out there. And then this goes back to bringing it all back home to crypto and also the credit. So first credit, there's lots of debt out there. And if these companies that we're talking about, how they're, they're having their own issues, if these companies that are creditors, they have issues with people you know, making payments or not making payments, they could be looking to divest some of their credit of uh, people that what their what their what people owe them to try and make their ends meet or try to make their profits look good. But if sort of some of these companies start to go up and uh, or go under, like Chase, well, I don't think Chase Bank is going to be soon, but I mean that could be on the horizon. Uh, Barclays Bank in the UK, a lot of these companies that issue credit cards could be an issue, could have issues if people aren't making their payments and can't afford to. I mean, because you got it, you got to put. It's, it's food, water, shelter. That's the main thing. So, so shelter, you're going to pay your rent. Then you need food. You're going to figure out whatever you can. Like I, I think Dollar General and the dollar stores, I see them all over the South. I think they're all over the country now. You see them. Uh, I think they're going to have record numbers. And there's nothing virtually in the store that's that's cost a dollar. But their, their profits are going to go up while Hulu and Netflix are going to go down. What's this mean for crypto? Well, crypto is a long-term play. It is not a get rich quick scheme it is not anything like that it's a wealth preservation scheme but if people don't have wealth to preserve because they're trying to make ends meet then there's not gonna be money coming into the sector that's where that's why a lot of us are are voicing concerns over BlackRock and other big boys coming in here and buying up everything as in you won't own anything and you'll like it because that's their plan 
The plan is to have the big boys come in and buy up everything while everybody's struggling to put food on the table. So lots of things to watch, lots of things to be concerned about, lots of things to look out for, but I'm trying to keep track of it all. If you have stories I should be checking out or, or have questions uh, about certain things, things are on the, you know, I got the ticker scrolling by, I got my, got my Patreon. Um, I probably not going to be able to do an AMA this week because I'm still recovering back from uh, the trip from last, last weekend. Some of you know where I was, uh, but uh, there'll be a, there'll be an AMA next week, probably for, well, we'll see who it is, but it'll be a pretty good audience. Um, and uh, my co my typical co-host, Divi Daddy will be available next Wednesday. So we'll probably put it a show together. Also more n- uh, news will be coming out very shortly about our event that we'll be doing in Texas. We moved it back a little bit just to plan it a little bit better and coordinate a little bit better. Probably be, I think it's the date will be October 8th, but stay tuned for more on that. And we are going to make it into a crypto conference made easy. It'll be very easy. You will fly into Dallas and then there'll be a shuttle. You'll go and then the shuttle right back. We're gonna, you won't even have to rent a car. It will make it as simple as possible for you guys. So we understand that people want to make ends meet, but we're, we're going to see how the event works. I know that people, some people are adverse to traveling, but I think we have a lot of people in Texas, but more to come on that. But while I get all those, all those ducks in a row, I'm going to close the drawer on the bureau. Look forward to your comments and like, subscribe to that, all that cool stuff too. But let me close the drawer on the bureau, say file leader one more time, and I will talk to you soon. Take care.